Hi everyone, and it's uh, it's a Monday, and you are very uh, you're very uh, welcome back to our Monday our Monday show, I should say really, and I hope this finds you all well. And this one we is streaming across the known universe, so we're we're everywhere. We're on we're on the YouTubes. I see you, D. I see you, Leslie. We're on the Getters. We're on the Twitters. We're on the Rumbles. All of this malarkey. We're all the different platforms. So hopefully between them. Uh, you will be able to, uh, to, to to enjoy the show. And we've got a great guest. I can see her. She's just appeared in the background there. Uh, hello, Monica. Uh, we will, uh, So, yeah, so just to say, everyone, that, um, as I say, you're all very welcome here. And uh, I think this is going to be a good one, a really interesting one I'm looking forward to. Um, and the whole point about, you know, this platform is to bring you kind of different perspectives, different takes, and uh, you, you'll you'll see what I mean about that in a second. Right, just before we bring our special guest into the studio, I'm just going to run her ad from our good friend Sarah Jane. And just remember, uh, as you watch her ad, that if you support your Sarah Jane, that helps support us as well. So uh, just a very quick ad, and then we're going to be coming to our special guest. Cue ad. I work with the greatest, most powerful force in the universe. It can help you with anything such as mental, emotional and physical trauma. This beautiful, healing, loving energy can be harnessed and fully integrated through the miracle of hypnosis. Why spend years trying to improve your life and affect change while this life-changing therapy takes just one session? It has such an enormous impact on people's lives. It can remove any addiction in an instant because we find the source of the problem. Your life has a purpose. My mission is to bring this knowledge and awareness to you today. There's never been a better time to reach your highest potential and be the best that you can be. So what are you waiting for? Now's the time to make your dreams a reality. Expand your mind and your heart in just one session. There you go, Quantum Hypno, the links below, go visit and uh, and see what you think of Sarah Jane. Right, okay, you might think, hey David, why are you wearing pink? Why have you got a pink, a pink shirt on? Well, I'll tell you why, because it's my tribute to Barbie. And you think, what are you talking about, Dave? What are you talking about Barbie for? Well, this is where it all comes together, friends, because we're very fortunate to be joined this evening by our special guest, uh, guest uh, Monica Yates. Welcome, Monica. Thank you so much, David, for having me. No, absolute pleasure to see you, um, uh, Monica. I'm not sure which part of the world you're in. I, I know I, you. I'm Australian, yeah. but I live in the US. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's funny. I was actually doing a, a show this morning. I was a guest on uh, an Australian-based radio platform mm -hmm. called TNT, if you know TNT mm -hmm. Radio. And uh, yeah, yeah, I was on, it was, it was, it was really weird. I mean, it was like half eight a.m. British time and it was like 5.30. It's mad. I mean, I don't know. It's, a, it's another world. How, how, long, how long have you, how long have you been in the States, uh, Monica, can I ask? Yeah, I actually grew up in New York, but I moved back um, 2019. But then I lived in London for a year during lockdown, which was not fun. No. But anyway, so um, no. yeah, I, I only moved back then after lockdown in 2021 at the very beginning. So I haven't been here too long. Oh, very good. Well, yeah. well, hey, listen, well, thanks very much. Maybe just could you just introduce yourself to our mm -hmm. viewers, wherever they are, and tell them a little bit about you? Yeah. So I'm a masculine and feminine embodiment coach. So basically what I do is I help women to feel safe to be in their feminine and let men lead. And then I help men to feel safe being in their masculine and take the leadership in their relationships and just in life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's, I also noticed in your in your in your little sort of bio thing, it says period whisperer. Mm. What, what's that in? So that's actually how I started my business and how I really got into this whole world. But I originally started, and I still do it, helping women to get their periods back, to fall pregnant, to fix like you know bad hormonal issues and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, and through alternative therapies rather than just going to the doctor and being put on a pill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think, Monica, the one thing a lot of us have felt over the last 
three years, I can't speak for you, but speaking for myself, mm. you know, three years ago, I might have had confidence in, let's say, allopathic med medicine. Three years on, I'm pretty convinced that there's many better ways to improve your health, be it, you know, reproductive health or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, without going near um, doctors, apart from which they won't see you. They won't see you anyway. But even if you see them, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that they're worth seeing anymore. What, what do you think about that? I mean, I was actually talking to a friend yesterday because she's got a friend that's struggling to fall pregnant. And the amount of women that have come to me and they've tried everything to fall pregnant, their doctor's like, you mm -hmm. can't fall pregnant, whatever it is, they come to me and we do a bunch of trauma work around feeling safe to be a woman and just feeling safe to be feminine and they fall pregnant. Like it is, when this first started happening for my clients, I'm like, what am I doing? Like, this is crazy, mm -hmm. but it really does make so much sense. Like, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to pregnancy, why would you, why would you bring life into the world if your body does not feel safe to do a very feminine thing, which is fall pregnant? You know, I've had mm -hmm. a lot of women, like I said before, and that's how I started uh, they've gone to every doctor under the sun to try and get their period back and they can't get it back. And the solution is go on the pill. Like that's not actually a period. Um, that's a breakthrough bleed. And they come to me, they then heal all of their wounding around men and the masculine. They feel safe to be a woman and be in their body, which a lot of women mm. don't feel safe to do. And mm. then their period comes back. And of mm. course, when you go to a doctor, for the most part, not every doctor, but for the most part, yeah. they're not going to tell you to do something that's going to fix the root issue because they want to keep making money. I always yep. say that my job is to make myself redundant, you know, and this yep. used to be the thing yep. with acupuncturists and Chinese medicine doctors. Like for those that don't know, Chinese medicine doctors back in the day, if you fell pregnant, if not if you, fell, if you fell pregnant, if you got sick, you would stop paying to go to your acupuncturist and your Chinese medicine doctor until yeah. you got healthy again because their yeah. job was to keep you healthy. I'm like, huh, if the health system actually works like that, we would live in a very different world. But unfortunately, it doesn't. <laughs> no, that, that would be. And, and just finally, we're, we're going to go on to Barbie in a second. Mm -hmm. Just final question, just on this topic, because it is it does interest me as well. Have you noticed over the past three years, again, with the COVID jobs being mm. you know, mercilessly rolled into all age groups, including pregnant women. Mm -hmm. have, have you picked up on any feedback there in terms of how that impacts on, or how that is impacting on, 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 on women of that, of that age? There's actually a lot of research now that, you know, and of course they don't want to say anything on mass media, but there's actually no. a lot of research now where they're like, uh, I think it's causing mm. problems. There's a huge increase in mm. premature births, in um, miscarriages, in in issues that are happening during fetal development. And of course, we can also tie that to environmental factors and people's diet, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So personally and like in my intuition, it's like, how could that not, how could something so new not have at least the smallest effect on yeah. the most sensitive thing, like creating yeah. a child? Yeah. Um, but in terms of periods, I mean- I was living in New York when, you know, the major rollout was happening and then it became yeah. FDA approved and whatnot. And I cannot tell you the amount of women that were just blowing up my, um, my inbox of just like, yeah. help me. Like I've never been in so much pain in my life, um, because mm. they have either had the jab or because they were around people that had the jab. And there was also a lot of research around being around people. Like it does happen, like it does affect yeah. you. So yeah. There's a lot. And of course, you know, the general news outlets are not going to say that. But the reality is for me, people are always like, well, is there any data? And I'm like, one, you can find a science that will back anything. One, one research article says olive oil is great for you. The other one says it's the worst. And I'm like, well, who funded the one that says that olive oil isn't good for you? Yeah. The fucking canola oil foundation. <laughs> um, so, you know, yeah. at the end of the day, you can find yeah. research that's going to prove any argument. For me, what always feels right um, is what are the stories? What are people mm -hmm. actually saying? Because people yeah. are not going to lie about what they're experiencing. So I always just look at my audience. I look at the, you know, the people that are following my content and what are they saying? Cause their stories are the truth. Yeah. I gotta say we had uh, Dr. Naomi Wolf on mm. with us a couple of times here on the, on the show. And I mean, the stories that just to your very point, you know, Monica, when you sort of hear, the sort of stuff that's that that's being go that has been going on, which the mainstream media disgracefully don't want. They don't want to talk about it, obviously, because <laughs> they were they were selling the drug, basically. Right. But uh, yeah, but anyway. So that being yeah. said, that being said, so Monica, the biggest selling movie, the most the, the, mm. the blockbuster movie of 2023, amazingly, 
is Barbie, isn't it? And first of all, did, did you see that coming, that it was going to be this mega success? I mean, here's the thing. The marketing was absolutely phenomenal. Mm. You know, there's there's these memes that go around that are saying, yeah. like, whoever was in charge of the Barbie marketing needs a raise because it was absolutely incredible. And as a result, everybody flocked. And there is so much hype about it that yeah. even though there is, you know, people saying good things and people saying not so good things, people are just curious because everyone's mm. talking about it. So even mm. if you don't want to go pay for a ticket because you don't want to go support the movie, you're going to go see it. Like, I didn't really care that much, but I had enough people being like can you please go see the barbie movie and then like talk about it because like i'm very confused with it like i want to know your thoughts so yeah. my fiance took me on a date poor guy and sat through the movie and um there you go. Yeah. and i was i like to say that i was catfished by it i thought i was going in for a fun chick flick i'm like yes yeah. finally a movie again i yeah. haven't been to the movies in years because there's yeah. everything is just like scary like just not my kind of movie. Yeah. I like to just go see a rom-com, something fun, something that I'm going to laugh to. Yeah. And I go in and the first scene is these children playing on like some deserted land with their Barbies. And then they, not their Barbies, their dolls. And they looked like Bitty Babies, right? For any Americans listening to this, you'll know American Girl Doll. And then there was like Bitty Babies. I had Bitty Babies growing up. And, um, and they're like smashing their Bitty Babies heads. And I'm like... I, I just, I, from the first, the first thing yeah. I was like, what is going on? And then I kind of just blew it off and I was like, all right, whatever. And then we kept watching, but I like to just basically say that I was catfished by the movie because I went in thinking that it was what the marketing yeah. was positioning it as. And it was yeah. something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause I have to say, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I have not seen it. Will I be going to see it? No, I won't be going to see it. But don't but waste, am, don't waste your time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but I'm but, but I am really interested though in, in, in the observations mm. that, that you, you've made about it, uh, Monica, because um because I think it plays there, there's all kinds of narr so much of entertainment these days, it's narrative driven, you know, political narrative, yeah. socio political narratives, and and that seems to be pretty much at the core of uh, of Barbie. I mean, we've seen all these stories here in the UK. Um, about uh, oh, uh, girls are now telling their boyfriends if you can't go and watch the Barbie movie, then we're done, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm thinking this doesn't seem normal to me at all. So, what's your take? Okay, so my take is there was parts of the Barbie movie that I really appreciated. What I found really hard because you know I went in there with like, okay, let me watch this and then kind of take notes for my podcast because that's why I went to go watch it because everyone wanted me to talk about it. Yeah. And when I was leaving, I just found it, I said this to my fiance, it was so challenging to even talk about it because it was mm. like one minute, okay, we're watching a Barbie movie. The next minute, it's a political agenda. Yeah. The next minute, yeah. and that's, and so I found it really hard to even like watch because it wasn't like I was watching a Barbie movie. I also wasn't watching like a full political agenda, a political agenda because there was some fun bits in it. Mm. So basically mm. my take is like, it's very multi-layered. Yeah. You know, in the traditional Barbie story, Ken is just Ken. I completely get that. So if it was sure. if it was just a Barbie movie and the Kens were just the Kens and Barbie was just being Barbie, I wouldn't have anything to say about it because it'd be a fun yeah. movie. We've just gone to watch it. We've gone to escape reality for a bit. That would be very pleasant. But it wasn't. There were moments where Ken was, you know, just Ken, but then they used that to basically put this intense somewhat like propaganda, like mm -hmm. intense yeah. political agenda into the story. And so, you know, whilst there was really great points about it, for example, you know, what, I'm pretending it's not a Barbie movie. Like it did not follow the same storyline. Yeah. You know, the one thing that I could appreciate about the movie was that Barbie didn't just submit herself to being in a relationship with someone she didn't want to be in to like suit mm to suit other people. I mean, that mm -hmm. to me is a good message to put yeah. out to girls and to, to young boys. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing. The, the problems that I had with the movie is that one, the, the main issue was it was very emasculating towards all the men. Yeah. Barbie yeah. did everything. Barbie was misindependent. You know, a really big issue that I saw was that everyone was called Barbie besides the mother, Barbie. She was, her name was something else. Like, Maggie or some weird name. And she was the weird Barbie. So everyone else was called Barbie, 
but she was the odd one out because she was pregnant and she was meant to be discontinued because it was creepy. Now, I am not one, like I run my own business. I'm not one to say you can't go be a lawyer as a woman or anything, but that sends a very bad message to girls of you are less than for being a mother. You know, so that's that, that was a big issue for me. The other really big issue was that the way that the Barbies got their power back because like Ken found out about, you know, oh, men can have power and like, and all this kind of stuff. And then they went in and tried to bring the patriarchy into Barbie land and whatnot. Yeah. The yeah. one big issue that I had was that the way that the Barbies got their power back was to manipulate the Kens. And so, it, and so the whole kind of overarching theme of the movie yeah. was many useless. They are basically an inconvenience. They, they try and take the power away from women, which in reality, if you understand men, good men, their whole life purpose is to make a woman's life easier. Their whole mm-hmm. life purpose is to protect and to provide like the complete yeah. opposite of what this movie's portraying. This movie's portraying men are an inconvenience essentially. And so, and it wasn't even like the, the movie ended where Barbies and Ken had 50, 50 equality in Barbie land the Kens rewrote the constitution or whatever they called it so that Kens had all the rights, like quote unquote patriarchy. And I'm like, okay, this movie like needs some fixing in here. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. and then and yeah. then the Barbies come back in because they want to get all the power back. They manipulate all the Kens. And the way they manipulate them is basically to get the Kens to all fight. And I can't even remember the exact details, but it was just yeah. so it was so bizarre the way that they did it. And then um uh and then and then the Barbies went into the uh, like wh- whatever they, whatever building that they had where they redid the constitution and they redid the constitution so that Barbie had all the power again. So it wasn't even like the movie ended where it was 50 50, where I could somewhat then get around it of like, okay, yeah. we're at least seeing men and we- men and women can be equal. No, it ended where Barbie's got all the power back, right? And I did appreciate where um, Gloria, who was played by um, America, I can't remember her last name. I did appreciate the fact that she kind of came in at the end of like, where is the normal Bobby? Like, where is just yeah. the average? Like that again, okay, that's a bit of good messaging. But the the messaging around men are less than, men are an inconvenience, yeah. men brainwash women. Like it was just so negative towards men. And at the same time, it wasn't even that positive towards women. There was a really terrible scene, in my opinion, where they were leaving Barbie land and they were skating, um, like rollerblading Venice Beach in um, LA. Yep. And there was a really uh, incredible line, like not in a good way, where basically Bobby essentially said that she felt unsafe by the people looking at her and the men looking at her. Like it seemed, Mm. um, Mm. her word wasn't aggressive. I can't remember the word that she used. And then the Ken's and then Ken was like, Oh no, like it's admiring or something. And it literally just was trying to show women always feel unsafe and men are oblivious. And I'm like, Oh my God, if you tell young girls that, that they are unsafe all the time, how do you think they're going to feel about themselves? Like that isn't, so it's mm. interesting is like sometimes yeah. when when these new TV shows and new movies are made with all this political shit about, you know, trying to like make women mm. more independent and men are less than, I'm like, you actually realize that what you're doing is you're, make women, you're making women feel more of a victim. You're yeah. actually, you're actually disempowering them. What would yeah. be empowering is for you to actually make a movie where it's like, you can be feminine, you can be a mom, you can be whatever you want to be. And you're strong like that. But instead, all of these movies and everything that are coming out, it's like you have to basically be a man in order to be safe in society, which is not helping these struggles that women are experiencing these days. And I know this because I've been doing it for five years with women. So I know what they're dealing with and I know the struggles. So the Mm. movie was just... I mean, there's so. I mean, I'm obviously remembering it from just going to see it in the theater once, but yeah. it it there was some there was some problems in it, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Especially, and my whole issue really to kind of wrap it up is adults can brush off the satire, right? And adults can yeah. sit there and yeah. can brush yeah. it off and be like, yeah. okay, whatever. So uh, whatever about adults, but my issue is young girls are going into that theater wanting to watch a Barbie movie and they are slammed with really negative messaging around the world and, and just being a woman and, and and men and how useless they are. And I'm like, that is an issue. Yeah. Cause, cause, cause a big chunk of the audience is young girls. 
you know, um, teenage girls, very, very um, at an age where they're very easily um, they're susceptible to these messaging. Yeah, these messaging. To that messaging. Yeah, and and so that, like you, I consider this to be unhealthy actually mm. for 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 that part of the, the 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 core audience. And and I think the overall audience of Barbie, I get the impression it is pretty much overwhelmingly female anyway. I can't imagine too many men uh, unless they're going. Uh, with, uh, along with their other halves, dragged yeah. along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, are going to want to go to see it. So, but but that, I mean that's okay. There's no reason why there can't be movies that are good for 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 for, for women. Uh, that's okay. I mean, right. Well, just like there's some movies which are good for for men, but 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 it's the whole kind of smash the patriarchy thing which sticks in the throat, you know, mm. because that that means it's more Monica than just it's been written with intent. You know, they, they, the, the script writers knew exactly what they were feeding into that. Right. And, 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 and so so it actually scares me a bit when you, when you have a movie like this, which is so big. I mean, I saw a list of the top I don't know, the top 20 movies uh, by gross, by, you know, in terms of their gross income. Yeah, it's already gone over like, what, 15 yeah. billion or something? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's mad. Yeah, yeah. So by the time this movie's finished, I mean, it'll have made a load of money for, the, you know, the people behind it. But but it's also very influential. And as you said, when you're trying to, you know, trying to have a, a sort of a encourage healthy thinking with, for, with, for, with, with girls and, and women, I, I'm not sure this is healthy at all. No. And my issue that comes into play, but like the reality is, is like TV is, it's brainwashing you in some kind of way. Right. Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, it's like, you know, and so, and we, we need to kind of think about it in terms of like, okay, well, what's the intention then as people are watching this? Mm. And for the majority of us, well, at least me personally, we want to watch TV to just chill out and escape. Yes, relax. And yep. so many of us are sick of watching TV that is just slapping our reality that we're very aware of in mm. our faces. And, you know, Sex in the City is another example. The new season mm. is, is similar to this. And I was reading an article in Harper's Bazaar the other day about it. And just, they were talking about the character Miranda and how in the new season, uh, yeah. like just like that, she's lost her character because they're trying to make it so politically correct and so quote unquote woke that, yeah. they, that it's lost why women watch it. Like women want to sit down and just, they want to be women. And I mm. think for a lot of people, it's like we now demonize the fact that like, yeah, men want to watch a guy's show and women want to watch a women's show. And it's like, we're trying to make everything so perfect when in reality, it, when we're trying to please everybody and be so politically correct, in my opinion, we please nobody, you know, because the, the, this, Sex in the City is a really prime example. Women would binge watch that shit when it was out. But the, the new the new version of it is nothing. And it's lost all the character and all the goodness of what women were so drawn to it because it was women being women. It was women sitting down, talking about guys and sex at brunch. That's what women do. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 do you think the woke agenda then is is mm. the thing that's playing out through well, the likes of that, the new Sex in the City, or or the Barbie? Do you think that that woke is the is is that the thing that determines? Do you think the parameters of it? What do you think? I just think that everybody's so afraid of being cancelled. And everyone's so afraid of, you know, can't yeah. like whatever the fuck that means. Yeah. Everyone is so afraid of being told like you're anti this, you're anti that because you have not even a different opinion because you're making a TV show to, to suit a certain audience, you know? Yeah. And I, the reality is, it's like, if you know how to run a business yeah. and if you know how to market, you should be marketing to the people that you know are going to love your content. Mm. And so, you know, Sex in the City, for example, or Barbie, for example, you should be aiming at the women that like Barbie. You know, like I liked Barbie. Like, yeah, okay, Barbie had some bad messaging for us when we were younger because we thought we had to have a tiny waist and legs that were 10 okay. feet long. So, yeah. like, I, yeah. I get points in the movie where they were trying to fix that yeah. narrative. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like we are trying to be so perfect as a society that it's making us all walk around on eggshells. And mm. there is, there's a lot of research that now shows that, like, 70, I think it's 72% of people will not speak their truth because they are worried about it affecting their relationship negatively. That to yeah. me is an issue that you can't say your opinion to a friend because yeah. you're worried the friend is going to end the relationship because of a difference of opinion, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, so to me, it's about like, it's about cancel culture, which is just such a shame. Yeah. Yeah. It, Cause as I say, I mean, I, I definitely saw some media headlines that mm. were being spread across the UK media anyway. And it was all very much um, uh, Barbie good, Ken bad emasculated men good 
and 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 of course that's so I mean, so ridiculous. It isn't is. It? You know what I mean? It is. I, mean, I do not think the majority of women want emasculated men. They don't. I can tell yeah. you that. I've done it for yeah. six years. The common thing that I hear, like I run an event every year and we just had one actually in Australia. And I yeah. do this thing where the ladies come up on stage and they basically like after a few days, they just claim what they want. Yeah. And I cannot tell you how many women get up on that stage and they say, I want to be fucked so well. Like I want yeah. a man that dominates me, that leads me, that cherishes me. And yeah. so what's funny is like society is obsessed with this toxic masculinity. But in doing that, we've softened men yeah. so much. We've made yeah. women become so hyper-masculine. They're bitter. They're angry. They're annoyed. They're exhausted by men not doing shit. Mm. And it's like, mm. you wonder why men aren't doing shit? Because we are emasculating them. We aren't letting them be men. And like the number one thing, honestly, that I hear and all of my like content that does the best is when it comes to women wanting to be led by men. They want to be dominated, you know? And of course that comes with, yeah. they need to feel safe to be able to receive that. They need to be able yeah. to be in their feminine to receive his masculinity. But the whole like, oh, toxic masculinity, it has not done society any no. good. It's, it's caused it's, more harm than good. It's caused more toxic masculinity than it's actually caused healthy masculinity because all we're doing is we're suppressing men. They're well, gonna well, explode. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually yeah. it's gonna come out. <laughs> You see, I I don't accept the toxic masculinity crap mm. in the first place. I think there's there's healthy masculinity, which is like natural masculinity. Mm -hmm. Don't need lessons in it. We just we're, we're, it's just the way we are. Yeah. When I have when I see in these movies the or and these other programs this assault on 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 masculinity and they dress it up in toxic masculinity, I just think it's so stupid because it, it's not going to lead to healthy fulfilled relationships it doesn't. or indeed women is it i mean it's going to lead to the opposite it's going to make people uh, women uh, more uh, more unhappy i would have thought it does you know there's actually uh, to bring it back to the rate like the, the research women are the most unhappy they've ever been mm. we have the most mm. amount of rights ever the most amount of choices we're yeah. unhappy and you know a lot of it is to do with the fact that we feel like we have to do it all because he's not picking up the slack he's not providing and protecting and leading yeah. and doing the things that a man is made to do and mm. it's it's not to say that women have to go and just be housewives and do nothing if you want to sure. do that amazing but it's more to say that you know when we suppress somebody's natural desires it doesn't go anywhere like it's not like it's oh okay now men don't want to be aggressive oh no it's still there but now it's going to come out in blackout rage mm -hmm. which then comes out as these abusive relationships yeah. and stuff because yeah. he's going to eventually explode versus if we were living in a society you know which we used to have where yeah. fathers would be present and they would teach their sons how to be men yeah. you then have these men that know how to regulate their emotions they know how to be men they you know what i mean like they actually yeah, they, feel they, accepted in their masculinity they don't feel confused like oh my god i have all this rage i have all this testosterone pumping through my blood when they're going through puberty but i have to hide it all i mean could you imagine like imagine if we flip the script imagine if we said mm. to girls you have to hide your period you have to hide all your tears you have to hide all your emotions mm. I mean, that wouldn't go down, but isn't it interesting that we allow our, we allow it to be done to young boys because we think that being more feminine is better. We think it's healthier to not be aggressive. And I'm like, no, no, no. Aggression and like being like, anger is healthy. Mm. Don't project it onto somebody else. No. But expressing your anger is a healthy thing. And when we demonize it, we actually just put it in the shadow, which means that now it becomes expressed in a really unhealthy way, which is not what we want. I think as, as as one of the viewers has just said, um, Monica, they're making the point that it's the very differences between men and women that 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 complement mm. we complement each other when 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 those things are are clearly discernible. If it all becomes a bit of a blur, then 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 that's screwing up something which which need, needn't be impacted in that way at all. You know, I mean, certainly I'm from a generation where it's very clear what the, the, the role models are. Mm -hmm. But I, I look at young men and I wonder, especially maybe even boys and their teenagers mm -hmm. and whatnot, and they're, they're subjected to the, the Barbie, the, the politicalization and stuff. And I wonder what impact that has on them. Or, maybe, or does it? I mean, I don't it, know. Does. it does. It does. I mean, yeah. You look at the level of testosterone, women have 
more testosterone than we've ever had, which is not a good thing. Mm-hmm. Women that are more aggressive and dominant, more hypermasculine have increased levels of testosterone. We, we should have a tiny bit, not much more. Yeah. Men that are overly feminine, they have more estrogen, they have less testosterone, yeah. they're less confident. They, they it, it just, it comes into other issues. It comes into then addiction and addiction to pornography and because mm-hmm. men are going to find a way to feel better, but they're not going to do it in a healthy way because there's no space for them to in a healthy way. But to your point, I mean, we are made to work together. The world is stronger when women are women and when men are men. Yeah, I agree. You know, when a man is a man, he wants to receive his woman. Like there is more harmony because he gets to be the man. He knows what his purpose is. And I did this book, I did this survey for a couple of years for my book. And one of the number one things that men have said is that they don't know what their purpose is anymore. It's like women mm. are so clear. I can do everything for myself. I can have a baby by myself. I can have an orgasm by myself. I yeah. can make money by myself. So he's like, well, then what's my purpose? And so we wonder why men are not going to university yeah. anymore, why they're doing shit at school, why they're addicted to everything. It's like, we as women, I'm like, we have responsibility in this. We are doing it to them because mm. we have been, uh, you know, manipulated to think mm. that being more of a girl boss and being more like a man is going to make us happier. And I, I believe that that's what made, that's what got me into this and why I'm so passionate about it because I believed that women were the bad end of the stick and that I needed to be some like radical feminist in order to be enough yeah. in society. But yeah. that's not true. And the reality is, it's like, it doesn't make anybody happier. And most importantly for women, it doesn't make women happier by trying to be like men. It makes them more angry and more empty inside. Mm. Because, I mean, for example, we've just lived through the um, the Women's World Cup, mm. um, for example, down in, 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 in Australia. And um, <clears throat> there was a big, the big uh, cup final was yesterday between mm-hmm. England and Spain. And that has been hyped unbelievable hype over that there and and part of me thinks i i fully respect female sports people it's mm-hmm. absolutely fine but but there's a nar- i think there's a narrative there as well which is basically saying you know um almost women are better than men and why don't people pay enough attention to for example women's football well i'll tell you why because it's crap that's why we don't pay attention to it i know and if it's really good we'd all watch it um but but again it's this massive wave media driven i think as well monica a media oh yeah wave of basically men need to supplicate so to be supplicants to to female to these well in this case you know football players but oh, well, what's your take on that i mean i always say if you are trying to prove your worth as a woman you are insecure yeah like if you are yeah, trying to feel like you are as good as a man or better than a man or whatever. I'm like, uh, who are you proving this to? Because if you believed it, you wouldn't need to prove it to anybody. Like a really basic example is if a man holds open the door for you and your instinct is like, I can do it myself or to say something snarky to him. I'm like, he's not holding the door open because you are armless and can't open the door for yourself. He's holding the door open for you because that is what a man does for a woman. And if you think that it's because you're not strong enough, that is your belief about yourself. That's not his belief of you. Like his belief is that as a man, I want to, I want to show that I respect you. So I'm going to hold open the door for you. It's actually, it's a sign of admiration, you know, and respect. And, And women have been led to believe that chivalry is trying to prove one's dominance over yeah. another. And I'm like, where did we get this from? And, you know, I read this article, a few actually, from, you know, quote unquote feminists and these women that write about that, we're sharing about how chivalry is bad mm-hmm. and like, it's, you know, it, it's just trying to, it's the power trip and whatnot. And I'm like, isn't it interesting that women are writing about chivalry, but men were the ones that invented chivalry? Like women don't get a say on what chivalry is, you know, mm-hmm. it's like men, yeah. men are the ones that are doing it and they have a completely different process in their brain. You know, women want love, men want respect. So if you are trying to understand a man through yeah. your own lens as a woman, you are you're already doing it wrong. The only one that can tell you about a man's experience is a man. So when yeah. when 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 women are going around and trying to, you know, one up men or prove that they're as good as men, I'm like you're only trying to prove this to yourself because mm-hmm. if you believed that you were as good as a man, you wouldn't need to prove yourself. Um, but in regards to the sports, I mean, the reality is 
like, yeah, I've got a really sporty sister and I'm all for women, do your sports, et cetera. Yep. But on yep. the, on the, for the vast majority of people, I'm not attracted to watching women get aggressive towards each other. It's not natural. It's not, it's not an attractive, yeah. it's not an attract. It's very, to me, it's, it's, I can't watch it. It's very harsh and it like stresses my body out because it isn't right. You know, like women are meant to be looked after. Like we are, we are softer. We are more delicate. And that is such a beautiful thing. So I'll watch men you know, go kick, go play AFL and everything like that. But mm. I don't want to watch a woman, a, a woman get, you know, hit in the shin by somebody's, somebody's well, footy boot and stuff. It's just not, it's not attractive. And I think that um, when we are constantly trying to fight, frankly, a system that it's, it's the system in, in some aspects isn't bad. I think a lot of people are so obsessed with like getting rid of the patriarchy. And I'm like, if you understand patriarchy, it's order. If we don't have order and if we don't have a patriarchy in some sense, doesn't mean that women have to be suppressed, but if we no. don't have, if we don't have some sense for patriarchy, there will be fucking chaos. It's, mm. it's like, we need it. And so if we don't have some kind of just norms, we then get very confused and ch especially children. It's like children need order. They need to know like, okay, this is what a normal child does. And it doesn't mm. mean that as a parent, you mm. can't help them flourish in their uniqueness. But if we just said to everybody, you can do anything you want be like, and just almost like have no uh, sense of normal, it actually would create more stress and overwhelm because it would cause so much decision fatigue. And there is positives in having some norms because we, a lot of people experience this just even with social media, there's decision fatigue. People can do now literally whatever they want. And especially yeah. for a lot of women, it creates a lot of decision fatigue of like, I don't know what to do. And then you go into decision paralysis and you don't do anything. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I'm just reminded as well, you're talking about, you know, uh, women's sports as a man, <clears throat> but I, I couldn't watch female boxing. The notion mm. of women. Oh, I know. It's awful. It, it just it, it horrifies me. Um, similarly, women's rugby. I don't mm. want to watch that because those games are very the, the 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 physicality of them is more suited, I think, to, to the male male anatomy and, and and the stuff that men have. Do you know what I mean? So I find that. And the other thing you mentioned about holding, you know, chivalry, which is a really good point you brought up. Mm. You know, hold a man. I, I was brought up. You hold it. Uh, I'll hold the door open for a lady. You don't need to be asked. Also, walking along the street. Monica, I'll walk closest to the. Yeah, uh, you need to get hit by the car first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 that's kind of my. I feel that's just natural. That's my natural role. I want to protect, and, mm -hmm. and I'm sure many men are like that as well. We were all brought up to do that, so it's not as if we're trying to sort of somehow devalue the women by doing these. You're things. valuing them more. That's the whole yeah. joke of it. Is these yeah. acts are literally showing. This is the whole thing of why I'm like, people need to understand these concepts better because the act of chivalry is quite literally showing the intense amount of respect and admiration and worship oh, yeah. they have yeah. for women. And yeah. here are these women being like, men think we're less. I'm like, no, they don't. And, yeah. you know, I was thinking about us in the shower this morning, actually, in terms of beauty standards and everything. And, and that women are so quick to be like, it's men's fault. Like they have unrealistic beauty standards for women. And I'm like, you realize if women stopped getting Botox, other women wouldn't feel the need to then compare mm. themselves mm. to their friend that looks 10 years younger than them. So it's like, what's interesting is for some of these components that a lot of women will blame, you know, the issue yeah. on, on men, it's like, we do it to ourselves. We are bitchy towards each other. We are the ones that are mean to each other. Majority of the time, men aren't mean to women because they mm. want to protect. I mean, yeah. look, a lot of the younger men coming through these days because mm. society has now allowed for the lazy boy, uh, like for this kind of archetype of men don't need to do anything. Yeah. I'm seeing a bigger issue in the work that I do where, where men aren't the good quality men they used to be. And mm. that's an issue. And it goes to, it, proves the point of this whole, you know, suppression of masculinity is actually causing what quote unquote worse men. These are not high quality men. These are men that are emotionally, you know, they're, they're, they're incapable of regulating their emotions. They, they don't know how to communicate with women. They don't know how to respect women because they are not taught by other men how yeah. to be high quality members of society because they're suppressed. Hmm. 
That's not that's not actually a good point. Yeah, mm. I, I can see that failure. But but tell me this: where do you think this kind of unhealthy messaging from a female point of view? Mm -hmm. What's the source of that, Monica? Where does that specifically come from? So if we look at the waves of feminism, right? Mm -hmm. First wave, second wave, great things. Once it got into the sec, it really it was really like the second wave of the Me Too movement. That's where it started to become to become an issue because men mm -hmm. started to become so afraid of being men because they were yeah. so worried that, you know, holding open a woman, a door for a woman was now sexual harassment, you know? And, <laughs> yeah. it, and, and so they yeah. started walking around on eggshells. Yeah. Women also started looking for things that were wrong or things that were, you mm. know, a bit touchy feely or, or inappropriate or whatever. And, and of course, like with the me too, like there's really positive aspects of it. Absolutely not denying that the, mm. the more so negative aspects of it is of course, women's reticular activating system, which is like the part of your brain that filters out information that de that you deem unrelevant and mm. filters in information that you deem relevant because we, there's so much information we have to filter it every day. If your reticular activating system is now looking for men being a bit gropey or a bit inappropriate or whatever, mm. what are you mm. going to find? You're going to find those examples. Yeah. And so, you know, and it, and so with the second wave of the Me Too movement, it was essentially like men, men felt really unsafe to be men. They were so worried about doing the wrong thing. Mm. It became super women's empowerment, women's empowerment, men are the problem for everything. Men yep. this, men that. And it yep. just became like men are the devil essentially. Yeah. And of course yeah. that's just, that's just compounded and snowballed. And then a, a big component that I've seen as well is the girl, I call it like the girl boss movement. You know, um, yeah. I don't know whether you, whether you're familiar with Sophia Amoruso, but I think it's her last name. She created like the hashtag girl boss. And for a lot of girls we've grown up and I used to be one of them of like, you just want to be a girl boss. You just want to be this like boss babe, independent woman. And it's also because yeah. for a lot of us, yeah. we were raised where it's like, girls can do anything, you know, like be a strong woman, be a strong woman. And if you mm -hmm. look at the history of that, it's like, okay, well, for a lot of us, our, you know, our, depending on how old you are, your mother or your grandmother had to be this like independent woman, yeah. right? Because feminism came through all important things, but it's like that kept being pushed and now it needs to stop because the pendulum swinging too far to the other end, right? Way. So if yeah. I look, for example, with me, my grandmother, she was a single mom because my mom's dad died when she was young. She had to do everything for herself. So she, mm. of course, became a very independent, emotionally mm. unavailable woman. That was passed on to my mom. So then my mom, of course, because she didn't know any better, passed that messaging on to me. I've yeah. broken the cycle in my family. But if no one breaks the cycle, it's mm. going to keep going. And the pendulum swings too far to the other end where it's like many useless women have to do everything for themselves. So I, it's, it's a hundred percent a combination of a lot of things, mm. definitely in terms of like, um, what we can see in the literature, it's like me, second wave of me too, that had a big impact on it. You know, girl boss, boss, babe, all this kind of social media influence of women just crushing it. And so the yeah. hustle, all the, the hustle culture really caused a lot of women to become hyper masculine. Yeah. So all of these women have completely rejected their femininity. They've deemed it that they're going to be more successful and they're going to be quote unquote enough in the eyes of society. If they're more like men, climb a corporate ladder, be a CEO, yeah. et cetera. And then we also look at obviously what's at, whatever's happened to the family conditioning. And I mean, it's a pretty, it's not exactly the best um, foundations for these girls to be growing up in. So mm. really what we need to be seeing is, is more of the messaging around you, like your femininity is so powerful. And of course you can do anything that you want to do as a woman and what feels right for you. Like, does it feel good to actually be a mom? Does it feel good to work mm. a little bit and be a mom? You know, there is no right or wrong, but for mm. me, what I always come back to is like women have rejected their core desires as a woman. They've gone after yeah. the hustle culture. They've gone after the girl boss, the misindependent, whatever it is. And they've completely rejected like their desires as a woman. And do you think you see the girl bosses mm -hmm. when they hit that point? Are they happy? I mean, the ones that I see, the ones that come to me and pay me to help them are definitely not happy. I mean, I can't count the amount of clients that are like killing it in their careers, like yeah. making all the money, doing all the things. And they'll one day to send me a message and be like, I think I just want to be a stay-at-home mom. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I've just had this realization that yeah. 
this doesn't make me happy. Like I'm just, I've been on the grind. I've been thinking it makes me happy, but I actually want a man that makes this money for me. I still want to go on the nice holidays. I still want to do the things, but I want my mm. husband to make the money and I want to look after our children and raise a family. And that doesn't mm. mean that every woman has to do that. Like me personally, what my fiance and I have talked a lot about is like, I want to be able to work, but I want to also be able to have like six hours a day to spend with the kids. Like that's really yeah. important to me. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, for a lot of women, they don't even let themselves have that narrative in their head of, do I want to be a mom? Like, would that actually really fulfill me? A lot of women, but mm. they, they can't even have that conversation with themselves because they have demonized their femininity so much that it feels suppressive and it feels yeah traditional in a bad way to just be a mom. And we saw this in the Barbie movie. The mom was meant to be discontinued because she was creepy. I mean, that is not good messaging to be sending young women that if you quote unquote, just want to be a mom, you are less than than a woman. And this is important because a lot of mothers these days, because of all this messaging, one of the number one struggles that they deal with besides mm -hmm. like the postpartum depression and all that kind of stuff, which yeah. can all be avoided yeah. is they don't feel like they are adding value to their household, which is such a shame because mm, I personally totally. think, and I'm sure you do, the most valuable thing yeah. is raising a household and raising the kids 100%. and doing the yep. laundry and cooking the dinners. And like those things are so valuable. And it's like we as a society, you know, and it's cap feminism and capitalism is very closely intertwined. We as a society have basically put so much um, uh, like what's the word? like a validation in the amount of money that you make. You know, women have been mm. led to believe that the more money that you make and the more external success you have, the better you're going to feel mm. about yourself. So when these mothers are looking after young children and doing laundry all day, they feel like they are not adding value to their family and to their husband. And that to me is heartbreaking. Mm. See, see, I think the concept of sacrifice isn't what it used to be. So mm. when, my, when my wife and myself were setting off uh, having our family, then the, the decision that we made would be basically she, she stayed at home uh, and I, I, I went out and worked. Mm -hmm. And it was a compromise that we did and it was the one that our parents had done as well. Mm -hmm. We did the same. But, but I th and, and that, was, that was okay for us. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that that's a paragon of virtue, but what I am saying is that the, the modern, especially moms, are put in a terrible position as well because they're they're sort of told, look, you can have this, you can have that, you can have the other. Just go out and work, work. But how can you do that at the same time? How can you have your stellar commercial career and be a wonderful mom? I don't think it's possible, Monica. What do you think? Well, and this is where a lot of women in the Barbie movie loved the scene from Gloria where she was doing her whole monologue about like, you can't be too fat, but you can't be too thin, but you can't be too this, but you can't be too that because a lot of women feel like that these days. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. And women have done it to women, by the way, mm. men aren't doing it to women. Like if you look at comment, like if you're wondering about this, look at comments on people's Instagram posts of women sharing like feminine things, mm. who's being mean to them? No men right? It's, or maybe there's a few, but it's majority women doing it to other women. I never have men say anything negative about me, but who says everything negative about, negative about me women. So in regards to what you said, the glorious scene really related to a lot of women because they struggle with that. And what I, what I feel in regards to this whole issue is that women have been fed this new narrative of you mm. can do everything Girl, without yeah. help. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, you can, as a woman, you could go work if you wanted to, and you could be a mother, but yeah. you need to hire a nanny. And, yes. and then, and then yeah. that's shamed upon is the issue. And then women feel like, well, they're not a good enough mom because mm -hmm. they've hired a nanny. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, there's always so much conversation around mom guilt, mom guilt, mom guilt. And I'm like, okay, well, why are we not doing anything about that? Why, why are we not mm -hmm. then, why are we not then valuing nannies because apparently if you hire a nanny it's like oh then you're less of a mom or you're working too much and so for a lot of women it's like we haven't opened up the narrative of help mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah. because back yeah. in the day you know we had a whole village i mean i always use the example of most women don't mm -hmm. know this women wouldn't even breast only breastfeed their own child right when mm -hmm. they've come, when they have just given birth, their only job is to rest and heal. And other women in the village would take the baby, breastfeed the baby, help the baby, because the baby doesn't just need the mother. The baby just needs 
adults. That's all the child needs. It needs love and attention from adults. But now we've completely lost the whole village scenario. And so women are trying to do all of these things themselves that they have never done themselves before. You know, they think men don't have any place. He doesn't know what I'm going through. We just get angry at them for helping in a, in a different way because yeah. they don't understand yeah. us. We don't know how to communicate our needs to them. We feel all alone. And I'm like, and we did this to ourselves. You know, well, well, so I actually, funny enough, Monica, I see this in social media as well. Even on Twitter, I noticed that some of the, some of the, 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 the women, mm. accounts, some of the most vicious trolling they get it, it ain't from men. No. It's from because I think I think with men there's a tendency that you you kind of hold back. But mm. for women, don't, they just go strong. So much I see going on. I just I look at it kind of horror because I would never behave like that towards I mean, it's woman. all it's insecurity. Everywhere. It's all insecurity. It's like all these mm. women feel yeah. insecure about being a woman. Yeah. And instead of like healing that and then feeling secure about your femininity, you just go and berate another woman that's shining her light, right? That's being confident and being outspoken because you're jealous and because you're triggered, you know? So the conversation around like mothers and working and, and that is, that is something that I think is very personal to the couple and to the woman, to the, Mm -hmm. like to the actual Mm -hmm. woman. But I think what, I think what is really important and what works for majority of couples is before you have kids sitting down and having a conversation of what your ideal you know, uh, uh, what the ideal raising of children looks like without any filter. So no self-judgment, no, it's wrong to hire a nanny or it's wrong to do this or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. And really mm-hmm. thinking about what would be my ideal day? And then how can we create that? Because yeah. if you don't have a village around you, then you need to hire people. And, um, mm. and that is something that I think is a really smart thing to be saving for or be having the conversation about years prior so that you are not left with postpartum depression because you're all alone with no help. And you see, when you talk about the village, would you agree that extended family, if it's tight enough, Mm -hmm. can be a a very, you know, crucial part of that village so that, um, you know, grannies and granddads and whatnot. And I speak as as one, by the way. Oh, Um, congratulations. can, can, Can play that role, which is incredibly fulfilling from this perspective, but also helpful to the to the young couples and as they try to get themselves. And, and I feel bad about the fact that um, over the last, let's say, 40, 50 years, you know, that family unit has been splintered, Monica, you know, mm. and, and for all kinds of ways, for all kinds of reasons. But if I look at the West versus the Eastern world, I think this is a real problem we have, especially in the in the in the Anglosphere, let's call it. But the, it the is. Of the family is it's it's unhealthy at every level. It really is. And on the note of like the extended family and using them to come back to the whole help piece yeah, is yeah. a lot of women, they don't know how to ask for help. They feel bad for asking for help. Cause again, it's like, Oh, well, I, I should be able to do it all. It's like, who said mm. that it's, it's insecurity. Mm. It's, mm. it's a lack of fully embracing your femininity, which is, I am, a, I am a fully whole, secure, strong woman. And yes, I need help to raise a child. Of course I do. You know, it's yeah. an, it's a, it's an, it's a struggle to be able to ask for help for a lot of women. And then the second one is, they, they think they have to know what to ask for. Like I need to, I need to be able to phone them and be like, can you then do like, have a, like have the exact task. Like, no, no, that's, that's, if they're an adult, they will be able to walk into the house. And if they've raised children before, cause you're their child, they will be able to walk in the house and yeah. figure things out to do, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah. I don't even have kids, but I know that I could walk into a friend's house that needs help. And I could say, sit on the sofa and I would find things to do in the house to be able to help. And so for a lot of women, it's just like being able to have that strength and know that that takes courage and that insecurity to mm. ask for help and be like, I don't even know what I need help with because I'm so overwhelmed and I'm so tired, but can you just come over and help me? Or can you just come over yeah. and yeah. watch the baby so I can have a nap or whatever it is. Yes. Oh, and then the last piece I will say on this is on the baby talk um, is a lot of women don't realize that, you know, what they, a lot of women struggle because they think what they need is they think they have to ask someone to come and look after the child so that they can go do something else. Yeah. A lot of moms just want to hold the baby all the time. Mm-hmm. And so then they're like, I don't need any help because like, I can't let the baby go. And it's like, no, no, you can hold the baby and sit on the sofa and they can come and make food and do your laundry and they can do a meal. You can go yeah. and sleep with yeah. the baby and you can be with your child 
you just let them come and do other things. So it's really about like opening up that conversation again of help is not a bad thing. We are meant to rely on other people. That is us as humans. Do, do, can I ask you this, uh, um, just as a curiosity point, yeah. do you think like given all the stuff we've talked about and given all the pressures that, 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 that particularly that's what young women in particular mm. have got on them, how then do you think the current um, LGBT, particularly the T bit of it, that yep. narrative, how does that impact, do you think? When, 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 when teenage girls are basically said, mm. wow, I mean, teenage boy can be the same, really, because let's face it, some women have kind of a penis. No, they bloody well can't. But that's <laughs> being almost taught as an article of faith. What, what do you think about that? To keep this short, because I had a lot of conversations about this, okay. yeah. is women have come very far at being a, at having their rights in the world, at yeah. feeling safe to be a woman, to show yeah. off their pregnant belly, to, you know, yeah. to do all of these things. And it's very backwards to me that we are allowing the smallest proportion tiny, in our right. society, like fucking yep. tiny, yep. to change our biological desires, thoughts, etc. And more importantly, to mm. to devalue the very real experience of becoming a woman or becoming yes. a man. Like there yes. are some horrifying yes. TikTok videos and whatnot of um these these men that have transitioned to become I don't even want to say women because in my opinion, they're not, they're not. true women no. and they are figuring out tampons. One, I'm like, you don't have a period, I, surely. I know, I know. And I know. number two, I'm watching this and just being fucking mortified because it is so disgraceful to think that yeah. this, you know, that, that they're getting praise. Meanwhile, the majority of women have gone through pretty traumatic experiences yeah having nope. their period, using a tampon for the first time, nope. bleeding through their clothing. And nope. this person has no idea of the journey of becoming a woman. And they think that they are just entitled to be able to call themselves a woman. And it's, it's, yeah, it's confusing. It's not good for children. It's, it's not healthy. Nope. Um, I, and it's not that I am like, I don't judge people. Like you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. I don't I care yep. about what you want to yep. do, but yeah, same here. But yeah. you do not get to think that you have the same experience as a woman or as a man, because I'm sorry, but you don't, you can't no. bring life into this world. You, you know, no. you don't, you haven't gone through a period. You have not gone through puberty. You have not gone through the awkward phase where you don't really have boobs, but you kind of have boobs and it's kind of mortifying. And, you know, as, as, as a boy, you know, boys, as they're transitioning to men, they've gone through this whole testosterone surge yeah. this you know trying yeah. to figure themselves out feeling so lost feeling so con so um confused and that is what makes in my opinion part of being a woman is your experience of oh, growing into a woman and part of what yeah. makes women feel connected to other women is that communal experience you know you can relate to major when you really talk great. about periods yeah. to another yeah. woman you can yeah. relate to a woman pretty quickly yeah. um and but so I'm, the, yeah. D Dylan, Vol Dylan Mulvaney mm. and, and, the, and the rest of that elk, um, they've never gone through any of that. Yeah. They, they present themselves as if they are. That means that they're devaluing, I think, the female experience. And that's, that's what, as a man, it horrifies me. Yeah. I see this as another attack on, on, on women. So in a way, as you say, women have never been as empowered Monica, but you've never been under as much attack, for, even if it's from a tiny fringe, but it's still a significant uh, Well, attack. yeah, it's like I don't want to go into a bathroom with a man in, like, even no. the whole, like, gender neutral situation it's, I'll walk in and I'm like, wait, what is, why is there a man in the bathroom? Like, and it's yeah. not that I'm, like, scared of a man, like I'm in a relationship no. with a man, but again, yeah. it's like, that little bit of separation, there's beauty in that, you know, if you understand polarity in relationships, yeah. there's something so sexy and desirable about like I'm gonna go to the ladies' room and I'm gonna go yes. have girl time, yeah. you know. Yeah. And the guys go to the guy, you know, and they have yeah. their time. And it's that separation, it creates community and it strengthens women's bonds and it strengthens men's bonds. And we've diluted a lot of that by thinking that we're all the same and we're all equal when, you know, in reality we're not. And and 
we're not, we're not equal and we're not the same. And I'm really big on that. We have completely different hormonal profiles. And even just on the note where we're talking about, you know, trans and, and, and men transitioning to women sports Mm -hmm. is like we're talking about before is a really clear example. The reality is, is that even when a man has gone through his whole transition and all the hormones, he still has more testosterone than a woman. So why are we letting somebody that clearly can run faster, fight better, swim better, be in the same race as a woman? It is not healthy and it should not be allowed. I'm sorry, but he needs to be competing with men because he has more testosterone than a woman and therefore it's not fair with women. And it's just like, why do Mm -hmm. we need to... In my opinion, why do we as the 99% have to change our whole lives, our whole thinking for the 1%, you know? And you know what I always come back to? It's like, isn't it interesting that some things will be, it's like some things that you say are politically incorrect or offensive or whatever it is, but other things and like people will still say it and, and they're allowed to say it, you know? Like you can say like, oh, she's a dumb blonde and that's fine. But if you say, no, he's a man, now- you're being so yeah. offensive to people. And it's just yeah. like, the, it's a lot of double standards. And I, and I think it's really exhausting for a lot of people, the double standards. Um, so, so in terms of the topic of that, I, I'm not about it. I don't judge people that do whatever they want to do, but especially the fact that children are now yeah. having this as part of like their school curriculum, essentially, that is, that to me is a huge, huge issue. Um, and, quite concerning for our future generations. Yeah, I, th- I think that's a fair, com- fair comment you make, mm. uh, Monica. I don't wish to judge anybody, and people can do, people are quite welcome to do whatever they want. Yeah. But, but by the same token, I, I do think that an awful lot of this is and will impact on, 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 on young girls and then as they grow older, as all this confusion is like kind of effused into the into the, the system. And, 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 and that's, as a man, something that I don't really want to see. And I don't no. see why the 99% have to roll over to accommodate, let's say, the cognitive dissonance, and I'm putting it politely, of the, the, the of some of that 1%. Listen, Monica, we've yeah. got to the end of our allocated time. So good. Listen, it's an absolute pleasure. I could have talked for another hour in this one. Listen, <laughs> folks, do check out all Monica's. We've got all the links anyway. Uh, Monica's sites, uh, um, and, uh, you know, please support Monica in, in the different things. You can visit her shop. And obviously you've got your podcast there as mm-hmm. well. Uh, so yep. there's lots of, uh, I, I do, I do enjoy the title of your, uh, your podcast. Well, not <laughs> Thank you. But, but it's good. It's good. I'm, 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 I'm all for pushing stuff. So Monica, as I said, absolute pleasure to spend the, the time with you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. As I said, it's been a delight. I hope everyone, wherever you are, Twitter, Rumble, Getter, wherever, blah, 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 blah. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, a big thanks again to Monica. And join me on Wednesday night when I'm back with um, uh, the lady who owns Cinema & Co, an independent cinema in Wales that the Welsh government tried to close down and torture during COVID times. And we're going to talk to Anna Redburn, who is the uh, lady who runs that. So another another important lady to listen to on Wednesday night. Who says I'm not bringing you enough women on the program? <laughs> listen. <laughs> oh, sexist. Thank you very much, folks, everyone. That's it from us, from Monica and myself. Good night. See you soon. <laughs>